Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and hey, you can do this. That's right. We have Expand Pass. Here, let me show it to you. Switch on the little camera. So this is Expand Pass, and I'm continuing the process of working on these uh, sampler-inspired filters. And this is all part of going forward with all this. You can plainly hear this is a bandpass. It's also a pretty simple bandpass, like some of my biquad filters, but it includes some distortion elements as well. And this is what you might expect. But since it's X bandpass, it still has that nuke control. So shall we find out what that does? Let's find out. As usual, things get a little weird. It is gain dependent. See, so you're getting a little kind of swoop in there. It's building up a bit of a rumble. But there's something more is that this is calibrated to get ex extra exaggerated with high nuke settings when you sweep it up. So rather than just kind of fading out, it's designed to get aggressive and stay aggressive even when it sweeps up. Now you might not think that is aggressive. It's more obvious that something funny is happening when we sweep down. And because it's the basic, sort of simple form of the filter without getting too complicated, it can get a little ratchety when you move it around like this. But we're starting to hear some funny artifacts. Well, check out what happens when we turn Nuke up all the way. Now that's aggressive. And we can get distorted as well. Okay, so that was enough pain for the ears. I will dial back some of the ear pain for the moment. So there you have it. This is the uh, early stage of sampler based or sampler inspired uh, filters that can do this kind of craziness. Like the other ones, it is gain dependent. Like this is padded way down, so we're not distorting as hard. And then if we do distort, now this is not what you get when you run really hot into a normal bi-quad filter because it'll just be louder and have a resonant peak. But this is distortion combined with the filter and making weird, crazy artifacts. Which we can also hear by dropping it down to these low frequencies and getting even more aggressive noises. Interestingly, sweeping this lets you control it without actually getting a ratchety noise because the manipulation of the biquad filter it's amplitude dependent so we can ramp the gain going into it smoothly dialing back the nuke means we can also get funky side effects here in fact let's ramp it way up Let's get a nice kind of, it sounds like some sort of additional electronic drum being included in here. 
and then we can use the dry wet to modify the raw signal so that it's an organic drum kit with a touch of electronic drums hinted in there in the background. Or indeed a crazy warble. And we can do this to make a more thundery kind of quality. And there you have it. So this is X Band Pass. It is a bunch of different forms of audio units and VSTs. I'll talk about that in a moment. It's Patreon supported, so it's free. You can download it and have it and use it. I'm going to continue to work on some other ones, although next week I'm, pro I'm pretty sure I'm going to try to do the notch filter version of this just to see, because somebody wanted it. Somebody in my streams wanted it. And I hope you like it. That's what it's there for, is for people to use. It's also open source, so if people want to integrate that into any of their work, you can do so. It's just MIT licensed, so all you have to do is give credit. And on top of that, there's one more thing. Okay, call it around 500 more things. I've just finished porting all of the Mac VSTs to the new M1 processor architecture. So in the post that I make with this, you're also going to see a bunch of links and I'm kind of rearranging everything link-wise as far as that goes. What I mean by that is rather than having new updates.zip or the separate Mediafire uh, account where I have all of that stuff downloadable, all of the different forms of plugins are now going to get separate downloads. So you've got Retro Mac AU, which is what I started with long ago. You've got Retro Mac VST. Both of these are built on a old laptop running Snow Leopard and compiled so that there are PPC builds. Like Air Windows covers a very large range of compatibility. So if you have an old G3 or a G4 uh, machine and you have use for audio stuff on it, all of my plugins are built to support that. As well as the uh, Mac AU for 32-bit or Mac AU for 64-bit. It's a fat binary, so all of those things are included. You've got Mac AU for the VST. I think I mentioned that. It's There's a lot. <laughs> I've got Linux VST. I'm given to understand that the new AMD processors are having some issues with that. I'm not really quite sure what to do about it, but um, the Linux VSTs are compiled on a virtual PC running Linux. There's Windows 32. There's Windows 64. And there is now the new um, signed versions of the Mac plugins. Namely, there's a signed Intel slash M1 binary for the audio units, and there is a signed Intel slash M1 for the VST plugins now too. For people who are running like M1 and want to run something like Reaper instead of having to run uh, Logic all the time, there's also some concern where there are some issues around um, not all of the DAWs are working great on M1 architecture, and there are people who are complaining, oh, your plugins are using much too much CPU, and it seems to me that every single time that's happening, it's because people are running on an M1 machine, and my plugins are set up to do M1 native operation, but they're always trying to run it on a DAW that is not. So all I can do is wish people the best as far as having the DAWs support the architecture, because that seems like it'll help. It seems like there's some kind of trip up. But especially with regard to trying to run a DAW that's not M1 compiled, hosting plugins that are, or some funny combination thereof. But um, 
as near as I can tell, the stuff that is running M1 native is running fine. You will, of course, tell me if that's not true, as people will. But um, bottom line is, I have finished the VST side of these ports. So now going forwards, I might have a little bit more free time to work on the actual plugins, although I haven't had to slack off very much on them. And I look forward to working on getting the actual sampler modeling going a little bit more because I haven't had time to even the turn the damn thing on. But um, the process of doing ports to the M1 architecture for all of the AUs and all of the VSTs, the Mac VSTs, is now done. And I'll link you to all of the separate downloads. New updates dot zip is not going to be a thing anymore. I might put a little link to uh, shortcuts for the other downloads. And at this point, if you're running, say, Windows 64-bit, you'll download just only the Windows 64-bit all packaged together as one zip. And if you're downloading the Mac AUs, you'll download all the Mac AUs as one .dmg file, one Apple disk, disk image file, because that's the signed uh, download that uh, you don't have to do anything funny in terminal to make it work. It should just plain work every time. And uh, that's what I've been doing all of this effort to get ready. At this stage, I just have to do about twice as much work for every plugin to port it to all of the different formats that we've got. But I'm not sure anybody out there, period, is supporting as wide a range of computers as I am, which is kind of cool. I didn't really plan it that way, but for a long time I've been stuck on, stuck in the headspace of not abandoning the old machines. So I developed my stuff on this older machine that is still Intel, mind you, but it's an older machine, running an older version of macOS, and compiling in such a way that I can support PPC machines because those still work. In fact, I, I have a couple of those that are just fine. And I have a... Here's one of the interesting thing about the old PPC machines. I've got an old PowerPC based, um, I think it's a G4 laptop. My brother gave it to me because he had abandoned it years, years ago. And my plugins will run on that machine. And that machine also has digital optical in and out on the connections that it has. Like the headphone jack is also an optical jack. And the line input jack is also an optical jack. So you can run the most high quality converters into these things. And they just, no additional dongles, no additional devices. You don't have to run an outboard converter or processor or anything like you can just plug the thing in and i believe it'll run at uh 24-bit 96k too so like these things still are useful if you're using air windows plugins and can do your work on them and the m1 machines are several million billion times more cpu effective and i'm also supporting those so yeah if anybody is aware of somebody else that is supporting all of the newer machines like M1 architecture and also supporting PowerPC and 32-bit uh, for both Windows and Mac, and I believe Linux, although I'm not sure that it qualifies for, I'm, I'm, I don't know enough about Linux to really be that expert on it. I'm just following a script and uh, producing the VST files for that. Anyway, if I'm a little scattered, it's, this, is, this is why. It's because I've been doing all of these plugins, and I did all the AUs, and then I followed it up by doing all of the VSTs, and I'm finally done. So with a bit of luck, I can have some fun continuing these uh, filter plugins and things. Like, this is almost done with the X-Series. I'm going to also include a notch filter. And... Once I'm finished with that, I want to go into what I'm going to call a Y-series, 
try to work on that zipper noise crackly thing that they do, if I can come up with a way of making that work, by incorporating some of the techniques that the sampler uses for handling its biquad filters. And then lastly, the, Ziri, the Z series, of course, is going to be the one where I'm going to try to clone the sound of a physical hardware device that people want me to do. And again, all of this work is supported by Patreon. Patreon's doing super well. And my patrons have talked me into, by basically overwhelming majority and massive demand, um, saving up the money that I get from the Patre Patreon and buying fancier, fancier samplers and things. Because I've got, say your EMU E6400, and that's very desirable among drum and bass folks. But people also want some of the really old samplers. And those aren't cheap. But if the Patreon thrives, I promise I will lay my hands on some. We'll just see how all this goes. It's, it's going pretty good. And I can't tell you how relieved I am to be finished with all of that recompiling of everything. It's been a real journey. And at this point, I'm now supporting all these different architectures, and a lot of them are working, you know, despite everything that the industry and Apple and DAW makers are able to do to get in my way, a lot of this stuff does actually work. So that's pretty cool. I will talk to you folks later. Oh, and uh, one more thing. If you want YouTube to push my videos, you know what to do. I probably don't even need to say it. The like, subscribe, ring the little bell, all of that nonsense. If you want YouTube to push my videos to other people, you know what to do. That's the stuff that we do. It's not to help me in any way, but it's if you want people to see this stuff and hear what I'm doing and get to play with this stuff themselves. On that note, I'll talk to you later. I'm going to go off, upload all these new builds of everything, and make some tacos and get some sleep before I dive into coding a notch filter tomorrow, which I'll be doing on a live stream. And maybe I'll see some of you there. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.